Hello again and welcome back to the channel. So today, something very different indeed. So this is the Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challenges, Balrog by Storm Collectibles. I don't know too much about Storm Collectibles. I've been aware of their stuff for a while, but I've never had any of their actual figures in hand. I did see the Mortal Kombat Noob Cybot, the one-sixth scale Noob Cybot recently, and I thought, yeah, he looks so, so cool. I, I do collect one-sixth scale figures, and I thought I'd add him to the collection. But then I thought, well, there's a Scorpion and a Sub-Zero, and they'll probably release a Reptile and so on and so on. Before I know it, I'll be down probably a grand. So I, I just thought, no, I can't get into it. And then I saw Balrog on the Big Bad Toy Store. I think he was around $80. I can't remember, I'll put it up on the screen. But I thought, I'll dip my toe in the water and see what it's all about. Unfortunately, the other figures in this wave, the Street Fighter 2 figures, the older ones like Ryu and Sagat, they are now very, very expensive on the aftermarket. So if I do want to get into this line, then it's, it's going to be expensive. Still not as expensive as the one six scale Mortal Kombat, but you know, let's see. So take a look at the packaging. He is a big old boy, massive, massive packaging. You can see he's got three alternative heads there. Looks like he's got some dash effect. Some nice, real retro artwork. Looks like it's been lifted right from the 90s video game. I wasn't really a huge fan of um, Street Fighter when I was a kid. I mean, I played it like most kids that grew up in the 80s, but I wasn't a massive, massive fan. And certainly the, the later games, I'm just no good at them at all. The original one on the Super Nintendo Nintendo, not too bad, but the newer ones, yeah, I've got no hope with those. Uh, and then nice image on the side here of Balrog. Interestingly enough, I believe Balrog is actually called Vega in the Japanese version, and they changed it for the American version. Or is it M. Bison? Can't recall, but I know that they changed the names up. And then on the back, some nice images of the actual figure itself. And then a bio here, where he's from and some more solicitation on the bottom. So Stump Collectibles is a um, company out of Hong Kong. Uh, final challenges. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's see what this figure's all about. Okay, so here he is out of the packaging with all of his accessories. And the first thing that I noticed was the texture. It's a real strange material. It's like a soft plastic. Don't know why, but I thought the whole thing would be quite solid. Uh, pleasantly surprised it's not, so it's gonna obviously have a bit more give when it comes to posing. So one thing I didn't see as well in the box was this accessory. So you can essentially have two looks, the shirtless look, or you can have the default look. So that's really quite cool. And the detailing on this is also quite impressive. The sculpting is nicely done, but the paint application is really top notch. Then he also comes with three alternate head sculpts. So the default is this, can't really call it neutral, just, I don't know, pissed off sort of look that he has. And then he has this angry look, and you can even see that he, he's got a tooth missing. Um, then a slightly beat up look, I guess. I don't know, this, this one looks, just looks weird, this one. But then finally, this is the battered one. So at the end of the game, when you beat Balrog and it comes up, you know, with the quote that he says or whatever, um, this is the picture that you get. So he's got a massive shiner, he's got blood coming out the corner of his mouth, and he's got the tooth missing, and also his eyeball is sort of looking up to the sky like he's totally dazed. So these are really, really nice sculpts. You also get this effect. So this, as I understand it, is a dash effect. So he has this move, and I'll pose it up later, but you essentially, I think you sort of have it behind him. I'll, I'll pose it up in a bit. But this is a solid piece of plastic. It's completely translucent, so it will catch the light and shine through it. It's supposed to be dust, I guess, a cloud of dust or smoke. So that's nice too. And then the figure itself is, Again, this same sort of material. So the top is that soft plastic material uh, and he's got these cuts all around the shirt and it's also this soft material. The head is tough, 
but the back, so the back of his neck, you can see he's all soft. This is all one piece. All of this here, it's all one piece. So it doesn't cut there. It doesn't look bad, but it is all just one, one piece. And then the shirt underneath is a separate piece. This is a tougher plastic than this outer layer. And then this is also a tough plastic. The shorts are a very similar material to this, at least this portion is a softer material similar to this. And then the short legs are a tough plastic. The arms are all tough plastic, real nice sculpting. You see the massive veins there. And then the gloves are a slightly softer material. So I can't really tell if you can, if that's been picked up on the camera, but they are, it's a softer material. And the legs is all a tough plastic as well. And then finally the boots, again, just a very solid plastic. So moving over to articulation. Now this does say on the back of the box, it has great articulation. And I guess I would agree with that. There are some issues of experience, but overall the articulation is very good. So he has these interchangeable heads. They're just on a straightforward dumbbell joint. So you don't get much movement down to about there. Good amount of up and then full rotation. The shoulders are a little bit interesting. So this is on a, I wanna say a dumbbell joint. It's pegged in at the shoulder. And when I change the torso, I'll go into a little bit more detail. I'm not gonna change the torso now because it is actually quite tricky. But it essentially just plugs into a cup and ball joint within the actual torso itself. So you do get full rotation and there is a bit of a hinge as well. So you get a lot of movement on your shoulder. You get a bicep swivel. And I want to say that this is a double jointed elbow. But I'm just not sure. I've not come across an elbow like this before. It looks double jointed and at the back you can see kind of has this secondary bend to it. But I'm not sure if it's because of the bicep that hinders it or if it is just a singular a singular elbow. I'm not entirely sure. I probably need a smaller figure to confirm that. So as it stands, I'm going to say that it's just a single jointed elbow, but you still get a lot of movement. And then you get full rotation for the hands or the gloves rather on the peg. And then he does have a crunch higher above the, um, the breastplate here. You're not gonna get much crunch at all. Probably to about there. And then forwards, again, not too much. In fact, almost nothing at all. But then you do get complete rotation at the waist. And because of the way that this is positioned, you could, I guess, just manipulate it so it looks like he's droop into one side, I suppose. I've actually had a few issues with this, and when I look at the shirtless torso, I'll get into a bit more detail. So just quickly, these are cups. This torn out piece of shirt here and here, these are cups, and they actually slot into this cloth, uh, this rubber section here, and then this slips underneath, and then the arms just pop, pop in. And then for the legs, he can get up, quite a generous amount of up to about there and then back to about there, all the way out to the side, to about there. He doesn't have a thigh cut, but you can get a little bit of rotation at the hip. Single jointed knee, it's, I say single, it's a little bit more generous than a single, but it's not quite a double, which makes me think that perhaps these aren't a double either. And then he doesn't have a cut. Um, I'll beg your pardon, he does. He has a cut at the boot. It's very tight, but he does have a cut at the boot. And then he also has a little bit of a rocker and a pivot. So this is a ball joint for the ankle. So not only do you get forwards and backwards, you can actually get some side to side as well. And quite a lot of side to side. And then he has a toe hinge. So he does have great articulation.
Okay, so in terms of the interchangeable torso, now I struggled with this torso. I really didn't know exactly what I was doing and the cups came out of the shoulders and I wasn't sure exactly how to put them back in. And so I'm not gonna try and do it on camera, but I will try and explain how it works as best as I can. So as I said, these shoulder portions here, they're actually these cups and I believe that's the right way. They sort of marry the outline of the, um, the shoulder. It just pops in, of course, for that one. And then here you can see inside this, this is essentially how the arms get pegged in. So you've got this massive dumbbell joint here for the neck, and then you've got these cups here for the arms. And they do look rather low. And when I first saw it, I did think maybe mine was, you know, manufactured incorrectly. But it does work, it does work. It's just ever so fiddly. This simply slots over, but you have to make sure it's not too far down. You need to keep it at that sweet spot around there. And then take these cups, and it is this way around, not this way around slot it in and then when the arms come off you've got to kind of feed it into the cup hole again i might have just been making a meal of this i really did struggle it took me maybe half an hour to get it to actually sit nicely kind of like that and then the arms go in and then that pegs into he's got a ball joint uh, dumbbell joint rather um, under his waist and that goes in there and then you're done I don't know if they could have made this any better as I said I don't know if I just stuffed it up and it is super easy but it does feel like a challenge and when it came to putting this torso back on it was even more of a challenge for some reason this cup this shirt cup it just it pulls underneath it didn't quite sit right I also had some damage. Mine had these flecks of white which just fell off. I don't know if they were just loose in the figure or if they did actually damage it, but they fell off of one of these cups. So do be careful if you have yours. So I'm gonna do my best to pose him up. As I said, I'm not gonna do this on camera because it just takes way too long. Um, I suppose I could speed it up. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best. Okay, so that actually didn't take as long as it did the first time, but you can see that it's still not quite right. This looks like it's protruding too much on this side and then not enough on this side here. Yeah, so I think it just needs a bit more practice. <laughs> yeah, that looks, that looks shit. It's a shame. And it's so frustrating. Uh... Okay, so my final thoughts on Storm Collectibles Ultra Street Fighter 2 Balrog. Um, I don't like this figure, unfortunately I don't. And it's not because the figure's bad, it's because it could have been so much better. So looking at the figure, he looks fantastic. He really, really does. He looks like he's walked straight out of that 90s video game and onto your shelf. The sculpting is fantastic. The paint application is top notch. All of the head sculpts are just really, really well done. 
I'm not a huge fan of that dust effect, but yeah, nice to have it. But it's the articulation and the additional torso, which for me, let this down. The articulation is just so clunky, overly clumbersome, particularly at the midriff. And the inclusion of having the softer material for the shorts and the hard plastic, it just means that you're constantly fighting against one or the other. But it's the torso, that extra torso, oh man. It looks great, it looks great, it really, really does, but it just wasn't pulled off well enough. Those cups for the shoulders are just a pain. It's such a ball act trying to get this changed. And then changing back to the shirted version, you have the same issue with the cups for the torn shirt. They just get caught underneath the pegs. It could just be that I'm not used to these figures and maybe I need to give it the benefit of the doubt. In fact, I think that's probably what I will do. I might look and see if I can get another Storm Collectible Street Fighter figure, maybe a smaller one, and give it a bit of a more, um, I guess give it a second life and just see are they all going to be like this or is Barrog just the exception to the rule at first I thought well maybe it's because this is an older figure but it's not this is one of the newer figures that they've released so I don't know why that torso is such a nightmare to use anyway do you have this figure if you do do you have the same experience as I did is am I doing something wrong please let me know I will have another look um, at another Storm Collectible and see if I can continue on with the line because I do think it has promise but as it stands, a little bit disappointing. So that about wraps up this video. I certainly hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you have, give it a like and do consider subscribing. And until next time, take care.